In Squid Game, you die as soon as the door caught you moving. But in reality, can motion detectors do what it did in the show? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about some Squid Game science and discuss what it takes to technically assemble the first game. In the show, two motion detectors are built in the door's eyes, each working independently to scan for all motions across the room. From what we see, they seem to be video cameras that capture visible light, as opposed to typical sensors that detect infrared. Or the microwave, ultrasound, or even radio wave can be used to detect motion. Today, we'll only focus on something everyone can use, which requires nothing but a camera. To detect motion like in Squid Game, the technical requirement doesn't lie within the hardware, which is the camera, but rather the computer software. To detect individual's movement, what a computer needs to do first is to detect individual players through a step called object detection. To do that, objects in the frame will be classified and localized. A label and a bounding box will appear around each object so we know what it is and where it is. This will be followed by a step called segmentation where the computer masks the shape of each object, which is similar to what we see from the camera's perspective. While face detection is a subtype of object detection, face recognition, which Facebook decides to shut down, is another step taken to identify individual players. What it does is to match all faces in the frame against a database, which is collected either previously or right before the game. This helps the computer to differentiate between individual players so it can keep track and announce who is eliminated. So far, we've talked about how to detect and recognize an object or player in a frame. However, motion detection requires more than just a frame, but rather multiple frames to see who is moving. That is why video cameras are used. Although moving object detection can be categorized into four approaches, the basic idea is to measure the difference between two frames, and if the difference is larger than what the game designer wants, a motion will be set to be detected. Now, of course, there is an objective measurement that can be subjectively decided by the game designer. By varying the frame rates of the cameras, results can already be very different because higher frame rates mean smaller time difference between each frame. Lowering the sensitivity and increasing the threshold can also make a difference because each pixel will need more change and more change pixels will be needed to say a motion is detected. This, of course, has to do with resolution as well. Given how Gihan and Ali were shaking in front of the door and still not eliminated, we can tell the game designer actually set the bar pretty low so that more players could make it through the first game. Although occlusion is still a challenge to motion tracking, where one person can block the vision of another player, this can possibly be overcome by varying the distance between the door's eyes, which is essentially how far the cameras are separated. Now, of course, it wouldn't matter much because the playground is much larger compared to the size of the door, but if the door is much bigger, hiding will no longer be an option.